Welcome back to Nexatech. Today, we're diving into some, some powerful reflections from Sam Altman on OpenAI's journey and where things are headed. So Sam Altman recently reflected on OpenAI's journey from a 14-person research lab to a leading AI platform. And in his speech at Sequoia Capital, he actually gives you a glimpse into what the future may hold. Specifically, the next three years, which are certainly critical years for AI progression, take a look at some of the developments expected in 2025, 2026, and 2027s. Soon of the things that Sam actually brings up here is the future of how we're going to carry your data across the internet. One of the things that we might be able to do is possibly sign in using ChatGPT as AI becomes more and more widespread across various platforms. It's very likely that this feature is going to ensure we can carry your preferences with us when using multiple applications online. Answer to Alfred's question about where you guys want to go is focus mostly around consumer and being the core subscription. And also most of your revenue comes from consumer subscriptions. Why keep the API in 10 years? I really hope that all of this merges into one thing. Like you should be able to sign in with OpenAI to other services. Other services should have an incredible SDK to like take over the ChatGPT um, UI at some point. But like to the degree that you are gonna have a personalized AI that knows you, that has your information, that knows what you want to share later and you know has all this context on you, you'll wanna be able to use that in a lot of places. Now, I agree that the current version of the API is very far off that vision, but I think we can get there. So one of the topics that Sam actually mentioned here is the possibility that there still might be some massive breakthroughs ahead. A lot of people assume that AI has hit a plate and we to think that we're in an S curve moment, but Sam makes it clear that there are still plenty of important discoveries that are probably going to happen in the short term and also the longer term, which suggests that AI is still set to grow tremendously far beyond what we know today. But you have conviction in the roadmap about smarter models. Awesome. I have this mental model. There's some ingredients like more data, bigger data centers, a transformer-esque architecture, test time compute. What's like an underrated ingredient or something that's going to be part of that mix that like maybe isn't in the mental model of most of us? I mean, that's kind of the, each of those things are really hard. And, and you know, obviously like the highest leverage thing is still big algorithmic breakthroughs. And I think there still probably are some 10 X's or hundred X's left. Not very many, but even one or two is a big deal. Um, but, you know, yeah, it's kind of like algorithms, data, compute. Those are sort of the big ingredients. Uh, hi. Oh. So now this is where we hear Sam speak about what's next for the rest of this year. And of course, for 2026. First, he brings up the fact that this year is expected to be the year of AI agents, which is without a doubt accurate. We've seen how uh, agents are becoming extremely popular. They just rolled out Cody X. And it's really interesting to watch how this unfolds. Value creation we come from in the next 12 months, would it be maybe advanced memory capabilities or maybe security or protocols that allow agents to do more stuff and interact with the real world? I mean, in some sense, the value will continue to come from really three things like building out more infrastructure, smarter models, and building the kind of scaffolding to integrate this stuff into society. And if you push on those, I think the rest will sort itself out. Um, at, at a higher level of detail, I kind of think 2025 will be a year of sort of agents doing work. Coding in particular, I would expect to be a dominant category. I think there'll be a few others too. Um, next year is a year where I would expect more like a sort of AIs discovering new stuff and maybe we have AIs make some very large scientific discoveries or assist humans in doing that. And, you know, I'm, I am kind of a believer that most of the sort of real sustainable economic growth in human history comes from, once you've like kind of spread out and colonized the earth, most of it comes from just better scientific knowledge and and then implementing that for the world. And that's wild because we're not sure if you're all familiar with the recent advancement that Google achieved, which is of course the Alpha Evolve paper. It basically produced some remarkable math related breakthroughs and it was genuinely impressive because for a long time, many people had doubted LLM saying they cannot create original knowledge, that they just remix what already exists. And now it's clear that this wall has been shattered 
and Webb believed that is hugely significant because if we now know LLMs are capturing new knowledge, then and it clearly means that there's a lot we still don't understand about these systems, and that deserves more investigation. And we feel it also proves there's still so much more to explore within these systems because only recently do we see breakthroughs like these. And we can only imagine what's possible when systems like Alpha Evolve get even stronger and start running more experiments in parallel. And 27, I, I would guess, is the year where like that all moves from the sort of intellectual realm to the physical world, and robots go from a curiosity to like a serious economic creator of value. But that was like an off the top of my head kind of guess. Uh, so that is actually a bold prediction because when we consider that timeline, that's two years from now. 2027 feels like a long way off. But two years is just a blink when it comes to AI. I mean, when we think about robots being actual creators of value, can you picture humanoid robots doing what humans do a day? Thanks to several innovations, AGI and superintelligence. I mean, there are dozens of companies now developing humanoid robots, and not just that. A number of these bots are already quite functional. We often hear criticism that these bots only perform polished demos, but there are rare real advancements currently taking place. We've been following robotics quite a lot lately. And we've honestly seen many different companies deliver solid breakthroughs in terms of getting these bots to perform practical work. We even saw Pizero recently hit a milestone with their new foundation model that lets robots navigate home environments they've never seen. And we also saw another company called Foundation Robotics does something does something similar, where they equip equip their robots with a framework that basically helped them understand real world physics. So overall, the robotics piece is just one major stepping stone. And with thinks that milestone is really truly nailed, and we see real world jobs being done more effectively, and we mean in two years that's going to be an immense leap forward because AI and robotics evolves as quickly as a space. We think it's going to be truly amazing to see just how far things go. AI has already changed the digital worlds, but to live among us, it needs to move beyond the internet data into the chaos of reality. So what's missing? The ability to reason through our worlds, just like we do. With an intuitive understanding of physics, we learn that from birth by interacting with the world, but AI doesn't. Methods like reinforcement learning and behavior cloning can learn specific tasks, but they don't handle new situations well. They don't understand how the world works. They just copy behavior or learn by trial and error. Enter latent space models. They simplify this messy real-world data. Into abstract maps. Think a bit of it as AI building its own understanding of reality, just like our brain does. Deep variational Bayes filters or DVBFs take this one step further, learning the laws of motion without being spoon-fed each and every example. DVBFs encode sensory inputs, like a robot's camera or touch sensors, into a latent space. And using Bayesian inference, they update their beliefs about the world as new data comes in, then encode predictions to act. It's a bit like giving AI a sense of imagination. Unlike behavior cloning or traditional neural networks, DVBFs don't just generalize from data; they understand the why behind actions. They need much less data, adapt on the fly, and can predict what's next. For me, that's like AI finally grasping the rules of the game, and not just following the playbook. And then this is where we see Sam pointing out that by the end of 2025, it's very likely we'll have AI systems that can perform cognitive tasks so well that we're honestly shocked and amazed by those abilities. But we will say、um, by the end of next year, end of 25. We expect we'll have systems that are capable of doing truly astonishing cognitive work, like the kind where you use it and genuinely feel、hmm, this thing is actually smarter than us at a lot of the really challenging problems. I, I will say,、um, by the end of next year, end of twenty-five, I expect we will have systems that can do truly astonishing cognitive tasks, like where you'll use it and be like.、Hmm, That thing is smarter than me at a lot of at a lot of hard problems.